Welcome everybody to this webinar on owning the risk in commercial underwriting in Touchstone. Again, my name is Peter Baltasidis and I'm with the product management team here at AIR. First off, I'd just like to thank you for joining us today and taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. We really appreciate it and we're hopeful that this will be a very informative session. This is the first webinar in a three-part webinar series. In today's webinar, what we'll do is we'll actually go through the process of evaluating a submission in Touchstone's underwriting mode. We've made several enhancements re recently, both on the modeling side as well as on the software side to facilitate and streamline the underwriting process for individual commercial accounts, and we really are excited to show you this functionality today. On June 23rd, on the second webinar, what we'll do is we'll continue along with the same theme, i.e. the same submission that we'll look at today, but we'll look at how it affects the portfolio in general. So what we'll do is we'll go into the portfolio side of Touchstone and we'll look at how it affects accumulations and we'll look at some advanced geospatial capabilities. On the third webinar on July 14th, what we'll do is we'll look at the broader solution set coming both from AIR as well as our parent company, Verisk Analytics. There's a wealth of data that's coming from um, both AIR as well as from Verisk and we already have many clients that are reaping the benefits of an end-to-end -end solution leveraging data and analytics, again, both from AIR and Veris. So that will be an exciting uh, session, and we really do encourage you to attend the next two webinars as well. Before we begin, let me just take a moment to highlight four key areas that I feel are contributing to AIR's success in the commercial underwriting space. The first one, enhanced modeling capabilities for commercial risks. We've made many enhancements to our modeling side to accommodate a, uh, commercial risks. There's a range of vulnerability enhancements that we've made to support a growing range of commercial risks. On the tropical cyclone side, especially with data that's come in over uh, the past 10 years with events such as Katrina, Ike, and Sandy, We've expanded the range of commercial classes that we support. We've substantially enhanced our commercial vulnerability to introduce a greater differentiation between engineered and non-engineered structures. And we've comprehensively enhanced our storm surge model with the forthcoming release of Touchstone. We've also made improvements to business interruption. And on the earthquake side, we've introduced a non-linear dynamic analysis to better reflect vulnerability of commercial risks. And in general, we've added an industrial facilities module. We've added builder's risk, so you can look at the risk asso associated with the building as it is being constructed. And we've increased support for specialty risks, such as marine cargo and civil infrastructure, such as bridges. Also, AIR's robust financial module supports a broad range of policy terms spanning primary, excess, and reinsurance terms. Our integration-based methodology accurately propagates uncertainty as terms are applied. We've introduced campus terms as well as spot facts, and there are new terms, including those applicable to offshore business. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'd like to mention is AIR's Catastrophe Risk Engineering, or CRE, consulting practice. The CRE practice offers supplemental services that can help you reduce uncertainty for individual risks and get loss estimates that are close to the true risk. They specialize in analyzing commercial buildings and commercial structures. Here's an example where a team within AIR is feeding back information to our research team and helping to inform our models and, our, and validate our models. In terms of a tangible uh, outcome, they helped us build and design our industrial facilities module. So again, this is a real example and something that's tangible that has come out of this uh, CRE practice. The third item that's contributing to our success is Verisk Analytics, our parent company. And we have, a, we have access to a treasure trove of assets in terms of data and analytics coming from Verisk Analytics. There's a wealth of claims data that's helping to inform our model validation and calibration. There are site verified property specific data points, so you may be familiar with or may use the BUR, the Building Underwriting Report, or you might be familiar with Prometrics. This information has already been integrated into Touchstone's Data Quality Module, 
So with, with Touchstone's data quality module, you can bring in your exposure data and backfill any gaps or unknowns within your data. There's also non-cat perils. Again, recently in Touchstone, what, we did, what we've done is we've integrated the ability to run a non-cat analysis in parallel with a cat analysis using the same underlying exposure data and using the same workflow. This was made possible by integrating ISO loss cost and ISO p-sold curves. Replacement valuation. With the integration of 360 value into our workflow, you can now generate replacement cost estimates for commercial structures. There's various data layers as well. Various data layers are fully compatible with AIR's and Touchstone's geospatial module. So you can bring in those various data layers, you can overlay them on your exposure data, and run meaningful calculations on that information. So that's the third item that's contributing to our success. The fourth item, last but definitely not least, is Touchstone. Touchstone is our flagship com comprehensive risk management platform. Just a little bit of background on Touchstone. It's been on the market for two years now. Um, and as a matter of fact, we are releasing Touchstone 3.0 this very month. So, so that's something that we are very excited about. But when we embarked on Touchstone, we had a vision for Touchstone. And that vision was for Touchstone to be a platform upon which you could build your risk modeling workflow. Now to enable that, we wanted Touchstone to be something where we could continuously build on top of, as components, more and more capabilities and, and functionality. That's been made possible by architecting Touchstone so that it is a services-based framework. That's a fancy way of saying it's based on APIs. The APIs uh, not only allow us to continuously add more capabilities and more functionality, but allow you to incorporate and integrate these capabilities within your own policy management systems or your own risk management systems, or to build complementary products such as a browser-based or an iPad um, extension to Touchstone. So back to Touchstone, when we first released version 1.0, of course we had cat loss analysis, but we also had many supplementary applications and functionality. We had hazard analysis, so that you could calculate things such as distance to coast, distance to fault line or flood information. All of that could be very useful in developing your underwriting guidelines and better understanding the risk. We have the data quality analytics, which I already mentioned. And we had the geospatial capabilities. Subsequent to that first release, we've added many more capabilities. We have model transparency, so you can look at hazard intensities by location. You can have the flexibility to adjust model output. So side by side with AIR's view of the risk, you can adjust that output up or down based on your own experience. Maybe that's by geographic region or by peril. If you, have some own, if, you, if you had some of your own experience and you want to adjust that output up or down, you, you definitely have that capability in Touchstone. Again, there's a non-CAT analytics which we've added recently. Using the same workflow, you can run both a CAT and non-CAT analysis. But most relevant to today is the account underwriting. We've made several enhancements to streamline the workflow for processing individual accounts, and that's the demonstration that we will show you today. And uh, that's and there's plenty more to come and we're continuously looking to expand and build out the, the, the full suite of functionality within Touchstone. Okay, so that's a little bit of background on Touchstone and on AIR. Let's dive into our demo. So at this point, I'm going to take the role of an underwriting assistant or a frontline underwriter, if you will. And I have a new submission that's come across my desk and it is for the Lux Hotels of America. And the Lux Hotels of America owns a series of boutique hotels in and around the United States. As you can see from the pictures here, we have some photos of some of their beautiful hotels. As you might imagine, this submission has come in the form of a spreadsheet. So this spreadsheet has, a, has all of the information that I might need or some of the information that I might need. It has the addresses for each of the hotels, construction information, occupancy, some building replacement values, etc. So there are some gaps. So one of the first things, admittedly, that I must do is I must, I must cleanse this data. I must put it in, a, in the proper format. 
and I might want to go back and fill in some gaps to the best of my ability. Once I've done that, Touchstone has a great feature called Import Express, which makes it really easy for me to import a file such as this into Touchstone. It basically allows me to map the columns in the spreadsheet to the columns to the corresponding columns in Touchstone. So for example, I can map construction in this spreadsheet to construction in Touchstone and so on and so forth. So that's something that we'll go through as well. Okay, now before we do that, let me ask you rhetorically, and what are some of the guidelines that you use? What are some of the decision steps that you use or you employ to decide whether or not you want to proceed with a given submission or a given account? Some of the things that I do, or that we do in the company that I'm representing here, is there's a series of guidelines, hazard guidelines, that we look at. One of the things is distance to, distance to nearest earthquake fault. So anything within a mile to a major fault line would represent a violation. Another thing is distance to coast, anything within a half a mile. And some flood information. Am I in a certain flood zone? Or am I within a quarter mile to a hundred year floodplain? So there's a series of hazard guidelines that I'd like to look at. The other thing is clash. And the way we define clash is anything that falls within close proximity, in this case half a mile radius, to any property that I'm currently looking to underwrite. One of the things that I want to accomplish here is I want to make sure that I'm not overexposed in any one given building. You might think of a situation where your company is underwriting several businesses in the same building whether that's a skyscraper or, or a shopping center. Again, this is something we want to try to avoid. And lastly, pricing. So I'm going to run my loss analytics, both a catastrophe loss as well as a non-catastrophe analysis. And I'm going to take the output from, that, uh, from those uh, analyses and feed those into my pricing engine. Now you might imagine gathering all this information can be quite tedious. So before Touchstone, I had to go out maybe to different applications. I had to open up uh, an, uh, an application such as Google Earth, for example, to, me to do some measurements. I might have to go into my policy management system to look across the portfolio to see if there was any clash. I would have to go in and manually kick off and run my different loss uh, analyses, etc. Also, gathering this information is merely the first step because the other thing I would have to do is overlay the data over my underwriting guidelines. So for example, I would do a measurement toward the nearest earthquake fault and it was 0.8 miles. Now is that a violation? I can see here that it is a violation, but you might have many, many hazard guidelines. In this example, we're just looking at three, but it's con conceivable that you might have 20 or even more underwriting hazard under underwriting guidelines. Okay. Also, underwriting guidelines can change. They might change quarterly, they might change annually, so it's hard to keep, keep tabs on what's going on. Now with Touchstone, with the press of a single button, and that's what this little green button is indicating here, with the press of a single button, Touchstone will go out, gather all of this information for me, and not only just gather the information, but overlay it on top of my business's underwriting guidelines guidelines that are specific to my company. So without further ado, let's launch Touchstone and let's process this new submission. Okay, so I'm hoping that everyone can see Touchstone on their screen. And again, we are in the underwriting mode of Touchstone. And as you can see here, is we can see a list of contracts or accounts that I'm looking at. And you can see, I can see the insured's name. I can also see the status. They're in a variety of different statuses. For example, some are bound, some are submitted, some are quoted. I want to add this new Lux Hotel Group submission to this uh, to, to Touchstone. And I'm going to do that by pressing this green button to add this new submission. And I have two choices here. I can enter it in. So you might imagine an example where I'm looking at a, an account with just a single building. It might be easier for me to just type it in into a form. And you can certainly do that within Touchstone. In this case, we're looking at a statement of values with many, with many uh, locations, with many hotels. So I'm going to choose to import. Again, this will launch the Import Express uh, capability, as you can see here. And it requires the mapping file. 
which I've already set up. And Import Express requires two files, a contract file, which is all of the submission information and the, 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 the terms, etc., as well as a location file. This is a spreadsheet or comma-separated file. So the location information is similar to the uh, file that we were looking at on the screen, where we had every location and every address, along with the, with the value. Now I'm going to click Import. Now as soon as I click Import, that Import selection is analogous to that one green button, that single button that I was showing on the screen. So with the pressing of that one button, there's a variety of things that are going to happen. The first thing is, you can see a new tab has opened up, so this is going to be the tab for this submission. Now, if I had many, many accounts to process simultaneously, I could go back and continuously add more and more accounts, and they would open up as different tabs up here. The other thing that it's doing, as it's reading the, uh, the mapping file, is it's geocoding all of the locations. So all the locations are coming in, they're getting geocoded, and once they're geocoded, then Touchstone is going to read a series of templates, and Touchstone has been designed Touchstone's underwriting mode has been designed to work against templates, and that's how some of this automation and streamlining is made possible, is through the use of these templates that, in this example, my senior underwriter or my chief risk officer have already set up for me. Okay, so now we are brought in. You can see the tab has filled in with the name of the submission, and we can see some high-level contract summary information. We can see the uh, the contract ID or the insured name, some additional information such as in, uh, inception and expiration date, the perils, total replacement value, number of locations. Okay, In the center we have the map and along the perimeter we have a series of analyses that in some cases have already completed or are already kicked off and running. You can see I haven't done anything, this is all happening automatically for me. And that's really great for me. It's really easy for me. Now, the other thing I mentioned is everybody's workflow is very unique. Everyone has a different way of doing their business and processing accounts. So we, we went to the extra effort to make sure that Touchstone's underwriting mode is completely configurable to your underwriting workflow. I'll show you one example. Through this button on the right-hand side, I can determine which analyses I want to see here. For example, I can also turn on a few other tiles here. Okay, so that's an example of how it's configurable, and these can and you can move these around. Now, in the center we have the map, and let me just focus your attention here, and let's take a moment to go over the mapping capabilities within Touchstone. Right away, I can see certain orange bubbles or clusters. The numbers within these represent the number of locations. And this is fully, fully, uh, inter a fully interactive map. I can zoom in. Okay. I can zoom into one location. I also have some mapping capabilities. So I can turn on, if you're looking at the top along the ribbon, I can turn on a satellite view. And we can get really right on top of this location. can almost take a dip in the pool here. Okay, let me zoom back out a little bit. The other thing we have is a grayscale map. Now I like the grayscale map because what we can do is we can overlay certain layers and get a nice view of those layers. So again, we have access to some layers up here. I'm going to go to my hazards, North America, Tropical Cyclone, and Coastline. I'm going to turn on my coastline. So we can see my coastline. I'll also turn on my storm surge zone. So again, I can see where these locations are relative to some of these hazards. Let's say you wanted to turn on a type of event. Let's say it's an RDS, uh, a Lloyd's RDS event. Let's do that as well. There's an RDS event for Miami-Dade. There we go. We can turn that on and there's a legend here where we can look at the different um, wind speed zones for these colors here. Let's pop that open here. 
So we can see these locations are in a 74 to 96 mile per hour zone. So that's our mapping capabilities. And again, there's much more, much more of that. And we'll be covering more, more of these geospatial capabilities in the second webinar series. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of these analyses that have already been run. We can see a series of dots, these red, yellow, green, there's, there's some green, red, yellow, and green um, traffic, traffic lights. And the traffic lights are giving us an indication of what's happening with this account, again, based on how we've configured this analysis. The first thing I want to look at is my exposure. We were looking at the map. Again, I have these exposure summary charts. So I can hover over these, and I can see that 92% of this exposure was at 92%, uh, was at exact level, exact match level. On construction, I can see 24% is concrete. But interestingly, is 50% is that unknown. So that might be something that I might want to evaluate further, look into further. Why, why is 50% of this particular submission at an unknown construction? Well, let's take a look at our data quality. So our data quality here has two dots. There's a gray dot, which is the data quality of my portfolio that this submission may become a part of. We can see the data quality score is 84. The data quality score is giving me an indication of how complete and robust this data is. The blue dot is the overall data quality score for this particular submission. So now I have something relative to compare against. The blue dot is this, is this account. The gray dot is my portfolio. So I can see that the data quality score of this account is a little bit lower than the average of my portfolio. And I bet you that this big unknown here is contributing to that. So that would be something that I might want to go back and, and look at again. Okay, so that's data quality. The other big one, as we talked about in the slide in terms of what my underwriting guidelines were, is hazard. Let me pop open this one. You can, you can maximize these. And I have a series of guidelines, hazard guidelines. So we can, we can pull up you know, distance to nearest coast. And there's 15% of my locations that are violating that rule within a mile or half a mile. And that's why I'm getting that yellow indicator. And you can design the, the rules to determine what constitutes a violation, what constitutes a red versus a yellow versus a green. Okay. Distance to fault, again, 25% of my locations are within a, uh, near a, a major fault. So you can see here how we're getting a really nice high level view of what's going on with this account. All right, let's take a look at this third tile along the bottom, Clash. Again, Clash is a, another example of where we're looking against or across the portfolio. Now, let me just take a moment to you know, reiterate the fact that Touchstone is a platform. And given that it is a platform, we're looking at an, a single submission here in underwriting mode. But at the same time, we're on this platform where we have access to the portfolio. So with things such as data quality, we're looking at the score of the portfolio. And here with Clash, what we're doing is we're looking across the portfolio to see if there are any other locations that are clashing against locations within this particular submission. Now let me focus your attention to the left-hand side here. This is my menu structure. So with, from this menu structure, I can get into the details behind any one of these analyses on this dashboard. So we were just looking at hazard. Let me just show you hazard again. This is a summary with the traffic lights, the red, yellow, green traffic lights. But, if, but at any point in time, I can get into the details. I, here we see all of my locations, all of the hotels. And as I scroll over, what do we see here? We see some orange highlighting. And the orange highlighting is representing the violations. We can see here distance to nearest, uh, distance to 100-year floodplain. So anything within a quarter mile is showing up as a violation. It's, it's being highlighted. Anything within a mile to the coast. So again, this is giving me the details behind what we see in the dashboard. Same thing with Clash. I'm going to click on Clash on the left-hand side here. So this brings up the details behind the Clash summary. I have a couple of tiles on the bottom here. On the left-hand side are two locations 
in the Lux Hotel group, two hotels. And it's telling me this first one, location ID 95, has two clashing locations from my portfolio. So I'm going to click on this. And it's telling me that the total, the TRV, the total replacement value for the clash is 18 million. And I can see there's two locations, two different accounts. One is a spa, so, and that's at the exact same address, 8822 8, Cynthia Street. So it's a spa, it looks like it's a spa within the same hotel. The other one looks like it's an apartment complex, and that's around the block. And I can scroll over to get more information, what perils these are underwritten for, uh, what the replacement values are, are they building replacement values, are they contents, etc. Okay, so this is giving me some nice information in terms of what's happening across the portfolio. I'm no longer blind to what was going on in the portfolio relative to this account. Let's go back to the summary. Okay, so now that we have a good indication of what's happening, in terms of the hazards, the exposure. Let's, let's go back and let's reconfigure the dashboard. I want to look at my losses. Let me turn some of these other ones off. All right, I've reconfigured my dashboard. I have here on the bottom center the results of my detailed loss analysis. And I have a variety of different return periods. I can hover over them. And I can see the, the estimated losses for each return period. I also have another traffic light here. This one is green. And what this one is doing is it's looking at my average annual loss relative to the total replacement value of this one particular submission. And I'm looking at that ratio. And because that ratio is less than 20%, then, then, then this, is, this, is, this is green and it's good. The other thing I have is this location on the top, this, this tile on the top right. And what this is doing, let me just maximize this so we can see it better, are my top 10 locations sorted by loss, sorted by average annual loss. You can see this one location, 150 Anza Boulevard, has a $236,000 AAL. I might want to look at that further. This is an interactive tile, so I can click on that, and the map will zoom right into that one location. And again, I can see that. I can see where it is. The other thing we have, so that, I think that's a really great feature where I can zoom into some of these, these top locations, these potentially riskiest locations. The other, the other tile I have on the bottom right is the marginal impact. Again, we talked about how we have access to the portfolio. I'm going to click to run this analysis here. Now what this will do is it will run a marginal impact. We have the losses in this tile for this account, but how does that affect my portfolio? We've already run the loss analysis on the portfolio side, but again, I want to look at how this particular submission will impact my portfolio. As this is running, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the details of my detail loss analysis on the left-hand menu bar here. Let's click on that. Again, I can get into the, the details of what's happening. I can see all my return periods. I can see my different perspectives. But what do we have here? On this column here, we have the results of our non-CAD analysis as well. So in parallel, again, with the same underlying exposure data, we, we, didn't, we ran a non-CAD analysis in parallel with our CAD analysis. So we have access to both of those. If I wanted to get into the details, again, along the ribbon, I can click on non-CAD. And I can see my non-CAT losses, my expected ground up loss for every single location within this particular account, right here. So we have our, my ground up expected loss for every single location. We can sort that by from greatest to lowest. And we also have the results of our piece hold analysis, where we can look at the impact of the excess layers. Back to our summary, our marginal impact has completed. Again, the gray bar is the analysis for the portfolio, the results of our portfolio level loss analysis. The blue dot is the impact. 
considering this account as well. So you could imagine a situation here at this high level view. What I'm doing is I'm looking at this and I would expect that typically I would not see a big difference between the gray bar, the portfolio and the blue bar, the portfolio impact. But again, you might imagine a situation where you do see a big bump in losses with the portfolio impact, with the, with the new portfolio impact. So that would be a situation where you definitely want to investigate this further to understand why. Why are my losses getting bumped up so much for this new particular account? Okay, so that's the dashboard. You can see how, again, to, to emphasize or reiterate, with the press of a single button, as soon as we had that exposure file ready to go, and as soon as we imported it, and as soon as we clicked import, we were brought to the dashboard here. Things happened automatically for me, almost robotically. Touchstone went out, got all of the information that I needed, overlaid it on my own underwriting guidelines, and presented it to me using traffic lights and using uh, these nice charts in a manner that's very easy for me to understand and gauge how risky this particular submission is at a very high level. All right, now let's say you wanted to create a report. We can also do that as well. Through this report um, option here, we can encapsulate all of this information into a nice PDF report. I've already run one for you to see here. So we can create a PDF report, again, which encapsulates all of this, this information. We have all of the policy information, the exposure summary information, our contract terms, the results of our loss analysis, both at the contract level as well as by location. So I can have the top 10 locations in great detail in terms of all their losses here. We have the results of our clash analysis. So we can see the two locations with a total TRV, uh, the TRV for, for each location as well as for the whole clash. And a summary of hazard attributes. So we can see in this case, out of this policy, we have 6.86% of TRV that's within 0 to 500 feet. It happens to be one location or distance to nearest 100-year floodplain. Within zero to one mile, there's 15 locations representing 137 million or 70% of TRV. So you can, this is all customizable in terms of how you want to display this information. So that's the PDF report that you can generate. So that's touchstone in terms of the, the underwriting mode and dashboard. Let me take a moment before we go back to our presentation just to show you how easy it is to configure this. So again, now that, uh, now that we'll look at this from the perspective of a, uh, an administrator or a chief risk officer, and I want to set up these guidelines, I would go into the administration console, and again, you have to be logged in as an administrator to do this, and there's this underwriting defaults option here. So within this underwriting defaults, let me just open up this window a little bit so you can see it better. We have all of our analyses here underneath where it says analysis default settings. We have our clash analysis, our data quality, our hazard, marginal impact, and detail loss analysis. These are all the analyses that are available through the underwriting mode. If we go all the way to the right, we have this column called auto run. Now if I check these off, these are the, the analyses that will automatically run as soon as I import or create my new submission. And that's why during this demonstration, we were able to see all of these analyses run automatically for us. You might not want them to all run automatically. And an example is perhaps you want to um, observe the results of the data quality and the hazard analysis first before going off and running a loss analysis, especially if it's a huge submission with many locations. It may take some time. You might not want to run that right away. Again, I mentioned that it's all run, uh, predicated on templates. We can click on one of these templates. We can edit it through selecting this little pencil. And again, this will bring up our template. 
and you can see here how you would configure your template. If I click on Tropical Cyclone, you can see distance to coast, anything with up to a mile, anything that's within a storm surge zone. If I click on Flood, anything that's in within a quarter mile to a hundred year floodplain will constitute a violation. So these are the violations, but how do you display them as red, yellow, or green on the dashboard? Well, that's through this widget template. We click that open, and again, we have this nice little chart here, and we can use these sliders to just move them along back and forth here. So if I said that, you know what, if 10% of my TRV or 10% of my locations, it's up to you, violate a given rule in a, in a submission, that's okay, I'm okay, I'm, I'm willing to live with that. But anything between 10 and let's say 40%, violate that, then that should be yellow, a warning. And if more than 40% of my TRV is violating a given rule, then that's, that's a flat out failure or violation. Again, you can do it by number of locations in the bottom here or by total replacement value. You can also hard code what they look like. So you can click on here. Let's say you wanted to show the widget tile on the dashboard and you want to sh show soil type or you wanted to show elevation. Again, you can customize and build your own view of the risk here. So that's really how easy it is to configure Touchstone's underwriting mode. Okay, so that concludes our demonstration. Let's go back to the slides here. So in summary, what did we do? We started off with, this, with a submission. We were able to import that. And, and as soon as we imported it, again, the, the, the press of that single button, Touchstone was off and running. It was off and running, importing the analysis, geocoding it, running a series of different analyses. The third arrow here is the customized guidelines. It was able to run those analyses and overlay the, the, the results of those analyses on my own customized guidelines, as we saw with the red, yellow, and green traffic lights and with a configuration of the, of the dashboard with the different tiles. And finally, the underwriting reporting. So we have some PDF capabilities where you can create, customize your own report, and you can, you can download that, print that, distribute it, etc. So that concludes today's webinar. Thank you very much again for your time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the second webinar on June 23rd, where we'll be continuing with this same submission, this Lux Hotels group, but again, we'll be looking at it from a portfolio side. So we'll log, off, we'll, we'll log into the portfolio side of Touchstone. We'll look at some accumulation management. How does this portfolio, how does, I'm sorry, how does this account, uh, this Lux Hotels group affect the portfolio in terms of accumulation? And we'll do that through using some advanced geospatial capabilities. So we look forward to seeing you on June 23rd.